If you have experience with other object-oriented programming languages, you may have heard properties being called class member variables, attributes, or fields. I prefer the name property because the synonym of property is a characteristic. Properties are placed inside the class curly braces, but not inside any of the methods. Properties can be directly initialized, or they can be initialized when the object is instantiated through the constructor. We'll explore the constructor in another tutorial. Properties can have different visibility based on the keyword that you put in front of them, such as public, private, or protected. We'll look at visibility in another tutorial as well. I want to make these tutorials as simple as possible and build upon each one of them, so we'll look at properties very superficially in this tutorial. In the last tutorial, I said we'll build a dog class, so let's start by adding some properties to the dog class. We'll be modifying this as we move forward throughout the course. We'll also create another class, car, that shows the type of characteristics a non-living object can have. A dog has different characteristics. We'll be using the public keyword in front of the properties in each class so that they can be accessed when instantiated. Like I said, we'll cover visibility in a later tutorial, so just be patient. For now, I just kind of want you to remember our previous tutorial, the class structure, and basically what we did right there. So we had the class keyword followed by the class name, and then this is what we're going to be focusing on right here. So let's go ahead and create our dog class. So we're going to say class, the name of the class, which is dog, open, close, curly braces. And then inside here is where we will start giving our dog some characteristics. So we'll say something like public uh, eye color. A dog can have eye color. And we'll say brown. Uh, we'll do a few of these just so you guys can get the hang of it. Public date of birth. Uh, January 30th, for example, let's say 2017. Public <laughs> dog does shed. Question. True. All right. Public kingdom. Oh, you guys didn't think I was going to come back this way again, did you? After all those tutorials. And then public for color is equal to black and tan. Now, why did I go through and add a ton of properties inside this class? Well, I just want to show you that if you have one or if you have a bunch of them, it doesn't matter. It's just one of those things I want you guys to get used to just seeing a massive amount of stuff inside your class. So just so that you don't get overwhelmed later in the, or in the future, we're gonna go through it right now and just think about it. We can have all of these, or we could just have that, or we can build upon that and have a bunch of these. And it's exactly the same stuff, right? I mean, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. So that's why I'm doing this, just to get you over a fear that you may or may not have of seeing just a ton of stuff, a ton of code inside a class. We don't have to add anything else to this class. It can be just a class full of properties. We can access those properties uh, once we instantiate the object. So we could say, for example, GS dog is equal to, I remember how we instantiate, we instantiate with the new keyword, we then say the dog as the class name, and then we surround it by, or we append, open close parentheses, and that's basically how you instantiate an object. So now that the object is instantiated, it's assigned to this GS dog variable. Since the visibility of the properties is set to public, we can access and modify the properties by using the object operator. So we can say echo GS dog and then our object operator. As you can see, it's already telling us, hey, here's a bunch of stuff. Now, even though inside here we use the dollar sign, once you're accessing it with the uh, object operator, that dollar sign is dropped. So we can say, for example, date of birth, and that's how you would access data, data birth. You would not put a dollar sign in front of the date of birth. So let's go to the browser, open up class properties, and there we have it, January 30th, 2017, which is exactly the result that we were expecting to get. We can also modify a property, so exactly the same way. G as dog, and let's say we wanna modify the fur color from black and tan to just black. And then we can say echo, GS dog for 
color. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do another echo before the modification. GS dog or color, just so you can see what happens. So we're going to echo out the fur color, then we're going to change it, and then we're going to echo out the fur color again. And I'm also going to just be adding a few bright tags here and there. All right, let's open it up, hit refresh, and there we go. First is the date, then it's our black and tan, and then once we changed it, it says black. So let's look at another example. So this time we're going to go ahead and create a class called car. If you can tell in PHP, we're doing a bunch of different stuff. This is not the way you want to code, by the way. You did not want to create a class, then instantiate the class, and then echo out some property from that class, then echo out an HTML element, and then continue on and then create a new class. This is, this is what they're talking about that PHP can get messy. Even though we're doing this, for example, I would never, and I repeat, never do this in a real life example. Let's take a look at another example. This time, like I said, we're gonna call it car. And as of PHP, you can now use type declaration. So if you've been watching this tutorial series from the beginning, you should be familiar with type declaration. It just specifies what type of data will be assigned to the variable, for example, integer or string. If you add the data type declaration, you will not be able to assign any other data type to that variable. So a car can have a lot of different properties as well. So this time we're gonna go set public and then we're gonna add the type declaration. In this case, we're gonna say we're gonna be storing a string and we're inside that string, we're gonna be storing color. So we can say public string color, so the color of the vehicle. Uh, we could also store the make of the vehicle. The make of the vehicle is also a string. Uh, and another string, a model. So then if we want to know the year of the vehicle, well the year can always is always an integer, as well as, for example, uh, the fuel type, like 87, 89, 91, 93, depending on where you live. and we, we can initialize some of them and leave the other ones uninitialized. So we can say, for example, field type is equal to default 93. Public int, let's say horsepower, we're not gonna initialize that. Uh, public int torque, let's do another uh, couple of strings. I think uh, this one should be given. We will initialize this one. And let's give it a six speed manual transmission. So default transmission of any vehicle, of course, is a six speed. Then we'll have another string, this time vehicle type. And a vehicle type, we're gonna say coupe. We can also use a decimal, like a floating point integer. And we can say, for example, exterior height is gonna be a floating point number. 29.7 for example let's do another one float uh, exterior width and i guess while we're at it another float exterior length a couple of more public string what we can do is uh, we can actually specify the exterior unit measure default for example inches uh, we can also do like a public double or not double it's <laughs> float same thing but not in php weight and then i guess while we're at it public string weight unit of measure and we're gonna say pounds you may change this to kilograms depending on where you live. This class actually now has a few more properties than even our dog class. So you, there's the dog class and this one now has even more. And some are initialized, some are not initialized, as well as some have type declarations and others don't. This is good enough. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be modifying these classes. So we may add or subtract depending on where we head on from here. So let's say we want to instantiate this car and we're going to create a new car called Lamborghini. So the Lamborghini color, we can set that to black. So we're going to create this car and we're going to be setting some of these properties. So Lamborghini make is equal to Lamborghini. 
because even though we named the variable Lamborghini, it does not know what make it is. The object itself does not know what make it is because you can assign any kind of vehicle now to this. So then we can say Lamborghini. Oh, I misspelled Lamborghini. Can't believe that. Model is equal to the best Lamborghini, the Diablo. Lamborghini year. This vehicle in particular is going to be uh, 1998. As you can see, I'm using an integer right here. If I did it as a string, I think it would convert it, but we're going to store it as an integer. Then Lamborghini horsepower is equal to 518. And we're going to test that out, by the way, what I just said. We're going to see if it automatically converts it into an integer or if it uh, is going to cause us an error. But let's go ahead and finish this up real quick. Lamborghini Torque, uh, 427, Lamborghini Exterior Height is equal to 43.5 inches, Exterior Width is equal to 80.3, Lamborghini Exterior Length is equal to 177.4. A lot of facts that you're learning, I know. And the weight is equal to 3,474 pounds. As you can see, I did not instantiate, or I did not reinitialize or change, modify these properties because they were already initialized inside the car class itself. So even when we access these later on, they will have the default features. So only if we wanted to, for example, change, let's say the exterior unit of measure from inches to centimeters, then we would have to modify here. But I'm okay with the default values as they are right now. Now what can we do? Well, let's try saying something like echo Lamborghini make dot Lamborghini model. And I guess I would need a space right here. And then period, we'll continue on on the next line. Uh, horsepower, we could say Lamborghini horsepower. We could also say, for example, weight, Lamborghini weight. And then we could put a little space and say Lamborghini weight unit of measure. I think this is good enough. So let's go ahead, go back to the browser. Actually, before I re hit refresh, I'm just going to echo out another break tag right here, just so we can see it on the next line. Hit refresh. And there it is. Lamborghini Diablo horsepower 518 weight 3474 pounds. Now I know I said I was going to do a modification. So let's do var dump. Lamborghini, and then I'm going to say Lamborghini something, for example, let's try assigning a string to this fuel type. So we'll say Lamborghini fuel type is equal to 89 as a string. Like I said, I think PHP will convert this, but we'll see. Var dump, I haven't tried it out yet, so it's new for me as well. Lamborghini. So we're going to do that twice and see if it causes any kind of error. So there's the, the first one. Uh, it says public fuel type. It's an integer. So that's from the first one. And from the second one, it's saying public uh, fuel type again is an integer 89. So it did actually convert that string into an integer automatically. So a lot of the times you can get away with stuff like that. Let's try Let's comment that one out. Uh, let's give it a shot with a, something else. Let's say something just completely weird. I wonder if it will convert it into some kind of integer or if it's going to cause an error this time. If we hit refresh. All right, this time because it was not an integer whatsoever inside that string, it says type property must be int. String used on line 74. So there we go. <laughs> the times that it causes an error 
is if we use a string with an actual string inside there versus a numeric string, it will not cause an error. I hope that you're not feeling overwhelmed. And if you are, cut down on a few properties and redo it. Maybe start with one property until you feel comfortable. And then just realize that if you can make something with one property, you can make something with n properties.